Who doesn't love cheesecake? And fortunately, cheesecake is one of those things that's really easy to make low carb. The main ingredients is cream cheese, sour cream, vanilla, heavy cream, eggs. All of those are ketogenic friendly, except for the sweetener. And of course, we have some wonderful ways around that. So if your sweet tooth has been rearing its ugly head on a ketogenic diet, an easy, easy, easy thing to make is a cheesecake. We're gonna make just a basic vanilla cheesecake um, and what I'm, gonna, what I'm doing is I'm putting a cup of almond flour, and this is Honeyville finely ground almond flour, into my springform pan. And I'm just putting it in. I didn't sift it, I just tossed it in there. That was a full cup for this size springform pan. I'm going to add to this a little bit of sweetener. Now use whatever sweetener you prefer. We have Swerve, and I'm gonna use a little bit of Swerve. It's not my family's favorite, but I actually bought a lot of it and uh, have a lot to get rid of. I'm going to start with just about a quarter cup, maybe a little less. Um, the crust doesn't need to be terribly sweet. I'm doing this because it gives it a little more bulk. And then I'm going to use some butter. Now often I'll melt my butter. This butter is just softened. I'm not going to worry so much about it being melted uh, because as I mush it around, it will melt and it'll, go, it'll get into the meal. Now I'm going to start with my spoon and I'm probably going to have to switch to my fingers um, just to get it all mixed well. But this crust is great for any time you need kind of a graham cracker crust. And you don't have to worry about it too much because the butter will all melt as it bakes and it kind of mushes down into the pan. pan. And then with the cheesecake on top of it, it holds together really nicely. Um, I did also add a little bit, just a sprinkle of salt uh, because the salt just brings out all the flavors. And that's really all you need. So I'm mixing this together and it's just becoming a really coarse meal. I could do it in the food processor, but then I'd have to clean the food processor and I'm really not all that interested in that. <laughs> so as I mix this up, um, it's kind of a mess right now. You can see that once I get my fingers in there and pat it all down, it'll be fine. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do is just mush it down with my fingers. And it does work better if you take the time to melt the butter um, than it does trying to use your fingers with just softened butter. Um, and I'm using the back of the spoon to just kind of flatten it out. You can also, while you're putting the cheesecake together, put this in the oven to melt it and brown it just a little bit if you want to. Um, especially if you're not, if you're doing a no-bake pie crust, you'd want to do that. I'm not gonna worry so much with that today. And I am going to add a little bit of liquid sweetener. I like liquid sucralose. I don't use Splenda, but I do like liquid sucralose. Um, and it's very, very sweet. So I'm just putting a few drops. And that takes out some of the residual aftertaste of the Swerve sweetener. That's about five or six drops. And I got one on my hand, so I will taste super sweet today. Okay. So that's pretty much just needs mission out. I'm gonna leave that alone and move over to the um, main event, which is the cream cheese. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna pause this just a minute. I'm gonna mix up, the, I've got three eight ounce bricks of cream cheese. I'm gonna uh, beat this up and you don't wanna hear the noise of the mixer. And once um, I get it mixed up, we'll be back. It doesn't pause. Okay, my daughter's telling me it doesn't pause. <laughs> so the bloopers and the outtakes are all going to be there. Fortunately, I've got a great KitchenAid and it whisked that up pretty quickly. All right, I've put in um, exactly three eight ounce containers of cream cheese. Remember to check the ingredients on the cream cheese. You want as few ingredients as possible. Trader Joe's has uh, less than one or one card per serving. Philadelphia cream cheese has redone their formula and they have more. I'm adding to my three bricks of cream cheese a third of a cup of cream. This is heavy cream. Also when you're buying cream, you'll notice in the store there's heavy cream and heavy whipping cream. I thought it was all the same until I realized uh, and this is, I'm sorry, this is heavy cream. And you can look for heavy cream versus heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream often has stabilizers in it so that when you whip it, it um, holds its form. 
those are usually ingredients we don't want. So unless you're trying to do whipping cream to make a dessert, I usually just buy heavy cream and avoid the heavy whipping cream. Also, I found that generic store brands often have um, fewer ingredients. Now, some of you are going, you didn't put the sweetener in, you're doing the eggs, that's okay. The whole idea of a cheesecake is it's pretty forgiving. You don't have to worry so much about creaming the butter and sugar, uh, since we're not using sugar, sweeteners tend to be more forgiving about that. So, so far I've got three bricks of cream cheese, I've added a third cup of heavy cream, and I've added three eggs. So let's mix that up and I'll get the sweetener ready. a minute so I can make sure you heard what I said. I was using powdered sucralose, not sucrose, powdered sucralose. Again, that's not Splenda. It is a uh, the pure form of sucralose. Uh, Splenda has icky added ingredients. This is just pure and it is 600 times more sweet than sugar and so you don't want to uh, overuse it. Start very small, add just a dusting at a time until it's the right sweetness. Uh, I need to mix this just a little more and then I'll add the vanilla while it's mixing this time. And I'm going to put a full teaspoon of vanilla. In addition to the full teaspoon of vanilla, I'm going to use just a half teaspoon of lemon juice. You don't have to do this, but we just like that bright taste. And in fact, I'm going to add a little less than I normally would, simply because my son has asked that I put a chocolate ganache on this. So we want just a little tart to go with the chocolate. So I did a little less than a half teaspoon. Now that's mixing up nicely. Break it down one more time, and it does look like it's all mixing together really nicely. Um, as I said, my son has asked that I make this low carb and add a chocolate ganache, and I'm looking forward to doing that after I get this in the oven. And the sweetness is just about perfect. If I was using something besides powdered sucralose, if you don't have that on hand, I would start with maybe a half cup of swerve and some liquid sucralose or half cup swerve, half cup xylitol and blend that. You know, whatever your stevia, the liquid stevia works really well with erythritol. Okay, while that's doing, I'm gonna to have to conquer this crust that I've honestly just about messed up. So, there's no, only one way to do this, and that's just get my hands in there. So bear with me. I should have melted the butter, but I was, thought I would do this quick and easy, and um, it really is more embarrassing than quick and easy. So, I hope I haven't, um, haven't, uh, for um, lost your trust in me since I've goofed up with this and it's coming along nicely. Just not as fast as I would like. And again, this was about three tablespoons of butter, a full cup of almond flour and some sweetener. I put um, some swerve and some liquid um, sucralose. So it's getting there. 
and it's not going to be overly thick. If you like a really thick graham cracker crust, then you're going to want to add a little more of each of those ingredients. Um, I'm terrible about giving out um, the amount of ingredients for thing, ingredients because it really does vary depending on what your um, the proportion you want to make. And some of you may not use a springform pan. You can just use a regular pie pan. And if you do that, then the one cup of almond flour is probably going to be plenty. You can also add a teaspoon or so of, or a tablespoon or so of coconut flour if you want a little different texture. So I've got this all mushed up. And if you can see, it's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I think sometimes that perfect is the enemy of done. And uh, in the kitchen, I know that it's chemistry, but some things are just far more forgiving than we realize. And you just have to get in there and not be afraid to tackle it. And um, if you mess it up, you can usually salvage it some way. Okay, I've salvaged that crust. <laughs> Let me put the cheesecake uh, in, the, in the crust, and we'll get this in the oven. Now, some recipes you'll notice with cheesecakes call for a water bath and fussy stuff like that. We're not fussy people. In fact, we've even been known to enjoy a no-bake um, cheesecake from time to time, and that's okay. Um, but if you're doing the water, the water bath to me seems like a lot of work, and I don't think it's necessary. So this recipe does not use a water bath. If you're more comfortable with that and you're, you're concerned about how it's going to look on the top, then certainly um, use a water bath. I am not going to do that because quite honestly, I'm not concerned because I'm gonna cover the whole top in ganache, in chocolate ganache. So any um, cracks or any ugly bumps will be covered and I will be forgiven because it's chocolate ganache. All right, got this out. And basically I'm gonna scrape it in here. This cheesecake will go in my oven not in a water bath, making sure it's all mixed well in there. It will go in my oven at 350 degrees for about 35 uh, to 45 minutes. You will know it's done when it's firm. And with a cheesecake, you don't want it overly firm. When you pull it out, it's going to be a little bit jiggly in the center. And then it should set. Rule of thumb with cheesecakes, the better the, um, the longer you let them sit, the better the texture is going to be. And I found that with most cheesecakes, sitting overnight at least 24 hours um, really makes a huge difference in their texture. So I'm actually making this, and my family may not get to enjoy it uh, tonight. We'll see. I don't know that I'll be able to keep them out of it, but we'll see. Okay, and I will leave enough in there that my production assistant, my daughter Grace, can clean it for me. She's a big help cleaning bowls and ba um, batter beaters. And I could have used a hand mixer, but it's easier to videotape when I use my stand mixer. So if you don't have a stand mixer, don't worry about it. You can use that. All right, this cheesecake is pretty much finished with regards to what I need to do with it. It's in the pan. It's a low carb cheesecake. Um, I did not calculate the carbs again, but probably if you got 12s out of this, you're looking at no more than three to four total carbs per slice, which is not too shabby, right? Hope that you make a low-carb cheesecake soon and enjoy it.